also noise, of course. Uh, if you know, well, like Flux is just a forward path tracer, so it's, it's uh, subject to noise due to complex scene, complex path, complex uh, light sources, can be anything. Uh, so we tried to fix that. And, and the, the, the attempt is, what we do first is uh, we track uh, the running variance per pixel uh, of the light map we are evaluating. And that is used for d different things uh, to balance the budget first. Uh, because if we know that a texel has converged, then we don't need to schedule it. We know that, okay, it has converged, let's skip it. It's for preview, so it's okay. And we use it also to denoise the light map. Uh, and to this aim, uh, we use the um, R2 filter, the same R2 filter uh, that's used for SVGF. And you can see on the right, at the top, uh, unfiltered light map, so noisy. And at the bottom, the filtered light map using the SVGF filter. And the small image at the middle is uh, showing the variance, red as a super high variance and blue as converged. And this is applied on the light map each, 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 each frame. Um, and we, before it's presented in, in, in the editor, basically. And that's a video showing it in action. So at the top, you can see the variance. Some texts are converging more faster than others. As you can see, you look at the indirect shadow from the, spot, from the column here. Pro at the beginning, it's very, uh, uh, very blurry, uh, but progressively, it just becomes sharper and sharper and sharper. Maybe I can try to show. No, I can't. <laughs> okay. So, um, and the goal of this uh, blurring process, of course, is first um, to avoid the uh, annoying noise that happens when uh, an artist is updating the scene, and also, of course, for quality. Uh, so in the future, one additional thing we would like to do uh, is to try to mix uh, image space and light map space uh, in denoiser. Uh, and on top of that, also, is to have an indirect uh, irradiance cache because then we can shorten the path. Like if we know that the indirect uh, light has converged, we can also stop uh, the path we are tracing right now because we know that if we continue, it will not add any information, any additional valuable information. So as I said, we had put light maps. I just described how we evaluate it. And now we also had put uh, irradiance volumes. And it's the same as the, like, like, all the code is the same. It's just the way we launch ray. Instead of launching rays over an hemisphere, we launch the rays over a sphere uh, from starting from each uh, probe uh, position. And we just saw that as a spherical, spherical harmonic L2. A bunch of numbers now, performance. Um, <coughs> You can see the different performance uh, results we have for different levels, different setup, different amount of local light. Uh, for example, you can see sci-fi by default 70 uh, million rays per second. And if you use the irradiance cache, which helps when you have many light, then you can go up to 300 million rays per second. A bunch of uh, future thoughts. Um, of course, path tracing uh, can be improved. Like we just have a basic version with a basic uh, gradient cache. All the research that has been conducted in that area could probably be applied and tried at least. Um, bidirectional path tracing, path guiding, maybe a better gradient cache representation. Uh, we also want to try one plus n GPU, so we could have diff um, n GPU running n flux instances and. Um, you could combine all those light maps at the end, and each GPU will have different it's noise uh, random seed to make sure it, it can all be combined correctly. And last but not the least, uh, GPU farm. We want to. We don't want necessarily all artists to have like uh, 15 cards on their, in their setup. So we would be good to have a GPU farm that could provide uh, as a service uh, the sampling on all of the, the preview of all those light maps, and of course for baking the game when it needs to ship then we'll need a GPU farm to make sure it's super fast instead of hours, maybe just less than an hour of baking time. So that's it. Um, 
that's how we implemented, that's, how, that's what we have to preview uh, interactive global dimension in uh, first byte. Uh, the benefits, uh, definitely faster iterations, like uh, definitely now artists can play around and move stuff around, it's just a matter of seconds. So productivity will go up, we expect. But not only productivity, but quality. Uh, artists will maybe try to play more with more lights or different material albedo, try to experiment a bit more because the result is almost instant. Uh, and there's a funny story, uh, not funny, but a uh, funny anecdote is like, at the beginning we were telling artists, okay, uh, what do you think if we give you uh, interactive preview of GI? Like, oh, okay, maybe, maybe that's interesting. But then, uh, then they saw it, like, and that something clicks, like, very something happened and they're very interested in having that all the time now. So maybe we can say that uh, retracing is back from the future, maybe. <laughs> Uh, so thanks to the full team at Frostbite because I'm just presenting. Everyone has worked hard on that project here. <laughs>